Good morning everyone. Today we're going to be solving inequalities with a negative variable. So by a negative variable, I mean your x term is negative. So for example, in this question, we've got 4 and then minus 3x. So if you've got a negative um, sign in front of that x, it can be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to talk you through these four questions. If you'd like to try them now, um, please go for it. Or if you're not confident, please just let the video running and then um, you can watch me explain them. All right, so let's try the top left one together. So I've got 3x plus 4 is less than 16. So I'm solving the inequalities. So solve just means find x on its own. So what values could x be? Right, so I don't want 3x plus 4. I just want x. So that plus 4 has no reason to be there. So I'm going to use that balancing method that I reminded you of last lesson. So if I, to get rid of a positive 4, I need to subtract 4. Because the opposite of adding 4 is taking away 4. So I'm going to apply that operation to both sides of my inequality. So taking away 4 from both sides, that 4 is now gone, and I'm just left with 3x. Because I took away 4 from the left side, I'm going to do the same to the right-hand side. So 16 becomes 12. Okay, so this is looking a lot nicer because I'm a bit closer to just x on its own, but I'm not there yet. At the moment, I have three lots of x must be less than 12. But I want to know, well, what does one lot of x have to be? Well, how do I get from 3x to 1x? I'm going to divide it by 3. So divide my left hand side by 3 to get the x on its own, but I must also remember to divide the right hand side by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that means that as long as x is less than 4, 3x plus 4 will always be less than 16. Okay, so that is my solution. Okay, I'm going to try the bottom left one now. Um, so it looks similar at a glance, but it's actually a very different question because I've, this 3x term is now negative. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is if I have a negative variable, so if I have a negative x term, I'm going to sort that out. I don't want a negative x term because I want my answer to be a positive x. So that's the first thing I'm going to address. Can you think of the first step I could do? Can you think of how I can make this negative 3x not a negative anymore? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. I'm going to do that because the opposite of minusing 3x is adding 3x. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of the negative part that I don't like at the moment and watch what happens. If I add 3x to the left hand side, my minus 3x vanishes and I'm just left with 4. Because I've added 3x to my left hand side, to keep it balanced, I'm going to add 3x to the right hand side. Do we see how this now looks a lot nicer than what I began with? Do we see that instead of a negative 3x now, I've just got a positive 3x coming out the other side of my inequality. And now that now that I have no negatives, it's quite a similar question to what I started with up here. Right, so I just want x on its own, so that 16 has no reason to be there. Let's, let's subtract 16 from both sides. Okay, so 4 take away 16 gives me negative 12. So I'm very close to my solution now, but I don't want 3x, I just want x on its own. To get from 3x to x on its own, I'm going to divide by 3. Negative 12 divided by 3 gives me negative 4. So that means that as long as x is greater than negative 4, this inequality will always be true. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, please can you pause the video and have a go at these last two questions. Okay, so I've got 4x plus 5 is greater than 25, but I don't want 4x plus 5, I just want x on its own, which means that positive 5 has no reason to be there, all I'm interested in is, is x. So let's get rid of that 5, so I'm subtracting 5 from both sides of my inequality. To get from 4x to x on its own, I'm going to divide by 4, which means that my solution is all the values greater than 5, so x has to be greater than 5. Okay, so finally... What don't we like about this question? Well, we don't like the fact that it's a negative x term. If I have a negative x term, so if I have a negative variable, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of it. What's the opposite of minusing 4x? Well, the opposite of minusing 4x is adding 4x. I'm going to do that to both sides and look how much nicer this now looks. Because I've added 4x to both sides, I've got rid of the bit I didn't like, and now I have a positive x term on the other side of my inequality. OK, so that 25 has no reason to be there, so let's subtract 25 from both sides. 5 take away 25 takes me all the way down to negative 20. How do I get from 4x to just x on its own? Well, I'm going to divide by 4, which tells me that x must be less than negative 5, and that is my solution. 
Okay, so please can you find your classwork attached for you on Google Classroom and I've attached all your solutions as well and please just let me know if you need any help. Thank you very much guys.